بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم how are you friends uh, here is yet another class it is in continuation to our previous class <coughs> it's class english lesson for god's sake hold thy tongue and today we will be taking up the exercise part of the lesson uh, we will skip uh, the working with the text section and move on to uh, lang uh, language work section the working with the text section will be taken up towards the end of our uh, lesson Uh, friends in the previous lesson we discussed phrasal verbs to some extent with a uh, passing reference to uh, uh, compound words today we will be discussing these compound words in some detail and then we will move on to complex words and uh, discuss them in little more detail a question may arise uh, that if we are talking about these compound words and complex words then are there any other types of words as well yes of course Uh, words are many types and these types can in turn be divided into different uh, categories on the basis of the language aspects for example we are all familiar with the uh, uh, parts of speech these are actually the eight types of words uh, based on grammar or we can say these are the grammatical word types or grammatical word classes similarly on the basis of uh, uh, structure words may have uh, um, uh, types Uh, actually we have three of them uh, three types of words based on their structure these are uh, simple words compound words and complex words uh, let's uh, have a look at these simple words we have some words here book house play uh, love on parrot we may have beauty as well ground bird line worm boat parrot every uh, close look at these words and we see that these words cannot be divided into uh, parts which have meaning uh, we can say they cannot be divided into meaningful parts they have some meaning obviously because they are words uh, cannot be divided into meaningful parts and they have an independent existence i mean they can exist independently such words are simple words although we can see these words maybe can be divided into parts for example beauty it can be divided into two parts view and t but we see that uh, neither of these two parts beauty or uh, view or t can uh, have meaning of their own and neither can they ex exist independently so these are simplest meaningful units uh, having a uh, independent existence these are the simple words moving on to these compound words book verb house boat playground online living room busy bee if we uh, look at the, these words we see that these words are made up of parts which are meaningful in themselves and they are uh, independent uh, units in themselves for example this book worm it is it has two parts book and worm we see book is a simple word so is worm these two simple words when they come together combine to form a new word that is book worm it's a compound word house and boat house and boat are two uh, simple words they come together and combine to form another word a compound word so is play and ground these are simple words on and line are simple words and they make a compound word online and same is the case with living room and busy bee therefore we can see that these words are made up of two or more simple words or we can say two or more, more independent meaningful units which come together and make a new word that will be a compound word these compound words uh may have uh, more than two uh, uh constant words as well for example marry go and round here are three words marry go and round these he combined together to form a new word that's marry go round mother mother in law it has three words mother in and law these he combined to form a new word that's a compound word mother in law and all other in laws as well 
talking about the meaning of these words, uh, it's not easy to guess their meaning. They may have entirely different meaning than the meaning of the constant words. For example, if we take this book form, the constant words are book and worm. Book is a word, it has some meaning. Worm has some meaning of its own, but when they combine to form a new word, that's bookworm, its meaning may not depend on the meaning of these words, or uh, it may have nothing to do with the meaning of these words, because bookworm means a person who reads a lot, who studies a lot. Similarly, if we move on to this word, egg head. Egg is a word and head is a word having their own meanings, but when they combine to form a compound word, this word may have uh, meanings that don't depend on either egg or head in, uh, uh, independently or uh, in a combined state because uh, one of its meanings is an intellectual, nothing to do with egg and head it has. Uh, therefore we can say the meaning of these words uh, doesn't depend, doesn't necessarily depend on the meaning of the constant words and uh, when we encounter a new word we may have to, uh, we may not, it may not be easy for us to guess uh, uh, its meaning so we may have to look the, it uh, them up in a good dictionary. Then the way they are written is also uh, uh, not a uh, uh, guesswork because these can be written in three different ways. Look at these these words: bookworm, houseboat, playground. They are written together with uh, together as uh, as one word. On the other hand, this busy bee and living room. They are written with a space. There is a space between living and room and uh, so is the uh, space between uh, busy and be. On the other hand, these words, online, there's a space between the two words, uh, there is a, a hyphen between the two words, and merry go round, there is hyphen, uh, hyphens, uh, uh, there are hyphens between the, the words and also in mother-in-law, or commander-in-chief also, there are hyphens between the words. So, uh, the meaning of these words and the way they are written cannot be guessed, uh, uh, but uh, uh, they may have to be uh, looked up in a dictionary for these things. Then we move on to the complex words, and uh, today's uh, man folks will be on uh, these com complex words. In contrast to these compound words as well as to these uh, simple words, we see that uh, these complex words uh, are not single meaningful uh, uh, entities uh, as uh, simple words, and nor have they Only. more than one uh, independent uh, unit uh, as uh, compound words. These have uh, two or more meaningful units. For example, untouched. This word has two, two parts. First part is the UN, un, and the other is touched. Touched is a simple word in itself, but un is not a word in itself. This touched has meaning. Uh, it, it is simple and it, uh, it, it, it is uh, an independent entity. On the other hand, although this un has meaning, but it cannot exist independently. It depends on the other part for its meaning. Same is the case with uh, this unspoken. UN and is uh, the meaningful dependent part, while as spoken is the independent part. In novelist, novel is the independent part and this ist ist is the dependent part. Same is the case with all these other words. These words are made up of one or uh, later on we can see more than one uh, uh, meaningful independent units and attach it to that one or more uh, meaningful but dependent uh, uh, parts. Uh, these such words are called complex words. So a complex word is a word which has a meaningful part that's independent and attached to it is a meaningful part that is dependent. The, the dependent meaningful part as we can see here this un at the beginning of the word and this ist ist at the end of the word and, and here the ly. These are called called affixes. So a complex word is formed when an affix is added to a word, maybe a simple word as well as uh, to some compound word. When affixes are added, we get complex words. Uh, if we see here, here we have a word backbiter. It has been taken from 
backbiting. Backbiting by itself is a compound word, and when we add the suffix er to the affix er to it, it becomes backbiter. So uh, this word is a complex word, although backbiter, backbiting by itself is a compound word, but then compound words are also complex words. Uh, you can see this uh, from this branching. The branching of compound words comes out from the complex words here. So uh, the overall impact of this word is that it is a complex word. Now, complex words are formed by aff affixation. We affix uh, uh, some uh, uh, part to a word. The affix is a letter or a group of letters that is uh, added to a word to make a new word. And the function of these affixes is to change the meaning of the word, to change the word class of the word, to make opposites or to make diminutives uh, from the uh, words that they are added to. These affixes are in fact of three types, uh, two types, prefix and suffix. You can see here in this word we have added the un, un part to these words. And these are added to the beginning of these words. The affix that is added to the beginning of the words is called uh, prefix, while as in these words, the ist ist and the er uh, parts are added at the end of the words, or this ly, they are added to the ends of the words, and the affix that is added to the end of the words, that's called uh, suffix. There is yet another type of uh, uh, an affix, that is infix. Infixes are added, uh, inserted into the words. For example, if we have cup full, uh, if we have to make it plural, it becomes cups full. The, uh, the plural inflection S is added, uh, uh, is inserted into the word, but we will not discuss these infixes uh, here that much. So uh, these, uh, these are the three types of words, the simple words, which are uh, single meaningful entities that can exist independently. Compound words are made up of two or more uh, independent meaningful entities and complex words are those words which have uh, and an affix added to the existing word, the meaningful entity. We can add two or more affixes to a word. For example, look at this word. Unlawfulness. The actual word is law. We have added three affixes to it. We have added two suffixes, full and ness, and, and, and a prefix, un. First of all, Full is added to law, it becomes lawful. It becomes lawful. Then ness is added to it, it becomes lawfulness. And then the prefix un is added to it and it becomes unlawfulness. Or we can first, first add this uh, uh, prefix and then add the suffixes. So a complex word uh, may have one or more affixes. It can have one or more suffixes. It can have one or more prefixes. It can have one or more suffixes plus one or more prefixes added to it. Now look at these uh, suffixes. We have got these suffixes. This is AR, ER and OR. When they are added to words, these are uh, suffixes actually. When they are added to words, they give the meaning of a person who does or is connected with some kind of work. Uh, the, they are pronounced as uh. And then there are other suffixes. For example, this an, an. E, 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 I, N, I, N, and I, S, T, S. When these are added to words, we get the meaning of a person connected with certain places, things, and kinds of works. Uh, added these to these words, we have got a word translate. When we add O, R, it, it becomes translator. One who does this. So, a translator is a person who translates. To a is the uh, no. verb, and when we add ist to it, it becomes tourist, one who travels for uh, pleasure. Similarly, novel, when we add ist to it, it becomes novelist, one who authors novels, and teach. Uh, when we add er to it, it becomes teacher, one who teaches. These uh, suffixes are added to verbs, and these are added to other words, uh, including verbs <coughs> as well. Now, when we add this uh, suffix ly, look at this word, strongly, and the word happily. Strong is an adjective, and when we add ly to it, it becomes an adverb, and same is the case with happily. It is uh, uh, adjective, and it, ly is added to it, it becomes an adverb. 
but we can add ly to nouns also. When we add this ly, suffix ly, to nouns, we get adjectives. ly added to nouns, we get adjectives, and the meaning is being like that as shown by the noun. Being like that as shown by the noun. For example, we can see here, friend and love. Friend is noun. When we add ly to it, it becomes friendly, an adjective. Adjective is a word that uh, qualifies uh, noun or pronoun, of course. Uh, adds to the meaning of uh, nouns and pronouns. Uh, this friend becomes friendly. This new word, friendly, means that it has the quality of this noun, friend. And so, lovely, having the uh, characteristic of the word noun, lo lovely. Then we can add this ly to adjectives, and we get adverbs. They do the meaning of the manner or nature, nature of uh, the uh, nature of something. So ly added to adjectives, we get adverbs showing manner or the nature of the thing. And when ly is added to nouns, we get adjectives. Uh, adverbs uh, are the words which qualify words other than nouns and pronouns. They add to the meanings of uh, um, verbs, adjectives, uh, other adverbs. Uh, clauses uh, or sentences as whole. Here's the word quickly. When we add ly to it, quick is adjective. Ly is added to it, it becomes quickly. Serious when we uh, is adjective. When ly is added, it becomes uh, adverb. Seriously. Careful is adjective. Ly is added to it, it becomes carefully an adverb. Quiet is, a, uh, is an adjective. Ly is added to it, it becomes quietly an adverb. Heavy is an uh, adjective. And ly is added to it, it becomes uh, uh, adjective, it becomes adverb, and bad. When ly is added to it, it becomes adverb. One point here, heavy is a word which has a y at the end. And uh, when we had to add suffix to a word ending in y, and having a consonant before it, the y changes to i, and then the suffix is added. Now, uh, we are seeing that uh, these affixes are used to uh, uh, create new words uh, which may have a different meaning, which may belong to different word class, or which may be diminutives or opposites. Now what you have to do is that, uh, here is a question in the textbook, uh, study the following words, backbiter, one who backbites, trader, a person who buys and sells things. Beggar, a person who begs. Orator, a person who makes speech. The endings er, ar, or or are suffixes which mean person who does or one who is connected with the kind of work as said earlier. And the endings ist, an, ia, and ee when added to words mean person connected with certain places, things, or kinds of work. Now add the correct endings to each of the following words and say what each person does or is connected with. Consult a dictionary if necessary. Uh, we are given a word. We are given a word. Translate. We add or to it. It becomes translator. One who translates. Novel. We add ist to it. It becomes novelist. One who authors novels. Tour becomes tourist. One who uh, travels for uh, pleasure. One who tours. Teach. Er is added. It becomes teacher. One who teaches. There are some other words and you will have to do them uh, of your own. Then there are, uh, is the uh, section, complete each sentence with an adverb. The first letter of the adverbs are given. As I already said, that adverbs uh, are made by adding, some adverbs are made by adding uh, ly to the adjectives. Uh, the first part is, we didn't go out because it was raining, dash. He is given and so it will be heavily. We didn't go out because it was uh, raining heavily. Our team lost the game because we played the very dash. BA is given so it's badly. Our team lost the game because we played very badly. There are uh, some more sentences and you will do them uh, yourselves. There's next part, put in the correct word. We are given two words in brackets and uh, a space where one of them is to be uh, filled. And we will have to see to which, uh, which word we need to qualify here. The first part is two people were seriously, two people were dash injured in the accident. The two words given serious and seriously. 
So the word we need to qualify here is injured. Injured is a verb and so it will take an adverb. Therefore the sentence would be two people were seriously injured. Second part is the driver of the car had dash injuries. This time uh, the word to be qualified is injuries. It's the noun plural of injury. And so uh, it will take an adjective. Serious is the adjective. The sentence will become the driver of the car had serious injuries. There are some more parts given here, some uh, more fill in the blanks, and you will do them yourselves. And we will move on to the working with the text section, questions and their answers. Question number one. What do the Quran and the traditions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, tell us on backbiting and scandal mongering? Answer. The Quran condemns these evils in strongest terms and admonishes those who indulge in such activities. While as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam compares these evils to eating flesh of one's dead brother. Question number two. What do the Gita and the Bible tell us on backbiting? Answer. The Gita tells us that a person who is free from the habit of backbiting is godlike, while the Bible says that such a person is a perfect one and has control over his whole body. Question number three. What do the Garan Sahib and Lord Buddha tell us on backbiting? Uh, the Garan Sahib tells us that a backbiter carries a great load of sins, and Lord Buddha lays stress on right speech to be a way to salvation. Question number four. Why did the servant of Rabbi Simeon bring tongues on both the times? Answer. The servant brought tongues on both the times to make the point that tongue can be the best or the worst thing depending on how it is used. Question number five. Why did the Rabbi Simeon invite his disciples for a meal? Answer. Rabbi Simeon invited his disciples for a meal uh, to teach them the value of soft tongue. Question number six. What according to you is the moral of the lesson? The moral of the lesson is that we should neither speak ill of others nor belittle one's character. And question number seven, how does our tongue do good or bad to others? Our tongue can do good by pleasing people and by making them happy. On the other hand, it can do bad by hurting and offending people. That is all from the lesson. Uh, we will be back uh, with another lesson soon. Till then, stay indoors, stay healthy. Goodbye and Khuda Hafiz.